oh yeah, we're gonna give it USB-C, you know, we're gonna get quad speakers on these things, we're gonna get MagSafe charging, we're gonna put LiDAR, we're gonna put better cameras on here. iPad team, uh, budget iPad here. I, I was hoping that maybe, you know, you guys are having a lot of fun. Could I get a laminated display? So oh, shut up, budget iPad. You don't need a laminated display. Your feature is you're cheap. I know, I'm cheap, that's fine, but uh, y you guys just seem to have a lot of fun over there. I don't know what you're gonna do with the M1 chip, but uh, I I'm still rocking the home button back here, and uh, a laminated display might be kinda nice. Okay, you know, I know you want some features. Have the center stage camera. You can have center stage, okay? How about that? Is that enough for you? You're welcome. Thanks. Uh, if, if anybody needs a lightning port, I'll be over here. Okay, bye, budget iPad. Ugh, can you believe that guy? He's the best seller somehow? Weird. Let us stand up for the budget iPad. Let's begin. I promise eventually I'll stop making videos on the iPad, but there's just so much to talk about right now and I don't want it to all be negative because 9to5Mac came forward with some very exciting news for the iPad 10th generation. So you could call it iPad X because that rolls off the tongue a little bit better, but that is literally what it is. You know, it's not an iPad mini, it's not an Air, it's not a Pro, it's just a regular iPad and currently the budget iPad is considered the 9th generation and we've gotten new budget iPads basically every single year for like the past five years. So I expect this trend to continue. And this year's sound like the biggest upgrade that that budget line has gotten ever because as you all know, there's very few changes with that iPad every single year. They basically just throw in a new chip and usually one additional extra thing. So like last year they got rid of the white bezels, which was kind of cool. I was a fan of that. And they started shipping it with 64 gigs of storage instead of 32. And it even comes with a 21 USB-C fast charge brick, which is pretty awesome. So as far as value goes, that's pretty much the Apple product that's impossible to beat. It's rocking the A13 chip now, it has center stage, and it's always tricky to figure out where Apple is going with it because you can't make it too good, otherwise it's gonna kill the sales of the rest of the iPad lineup, but you have to make it better than the year before. And 9to5Mac's report is saying that Apple wants to give it the A14 chip, Pretty logical. They're already mass producing the A14 chip for the iPhone 12, so they have a lot of those around. It's marginally faster than the A13 chip, so they can consider that an upgrade. But the most exciting thing that got me really, really hyped as soon as I read it is that they want the iPad 10 allegedly to support USB-C. Okay, first of all, I freak out and party anytime the lightning port goes away and gets replaced by the USB-C port. So that's enough excitement in itself, but I don't think enough people were talking about what this actually means for the budget iPad because it's not just okay the connectors a little different now you know it kind of simplifies the lineup basically every iPad except the budget iPad has USB-C so for lineup consistency makes sense iPad OS seems to be pretty comfortable with USB-C so just add it to the iPad but you know what I was thinking this means Apple Pencil 1 might not have a use anymore. They might finally get rid of that pencil that they've been selling for the past seven years with the stupid charge method, with the easy to lose cap. Apple Pencil 2 is the way to go. This is the far superior stylus, no cap. I apologize. Okay, that joke was, was terrible. Don't worry, I'll edit it out. But that brings another question into effect. Well, if they're ditching the Apple Pencil 1, are they gonna keep the same chassis design that the budget iPad has had since the beginning. You know, it kind of shocked everyone in 2017. It was like early 2017 when Apple was just like, eh, you know what? We want to drop a $300 iPad. Everyone was like, really? $300? Like, we're, we're getting close to iPod touch levels of pricing, but you get a whole iPad out of it? And it's always had that same kind of basic rounded chassis, which isn't bad for the record. You know, it's their best-selling iPad. A lot of people have that model. My grandparents have that model. My mom has that model. There's a lot of people that buy that iPad because it's the most incredible value for people who don't care about all these bells and whistles between, you know, gesture controls or fancy cameras or faster processors. It's just like like the most core fundamental idea of what an iPad is. And if it's adopting USB-C, there's basically two ways they can handle that. For one, they could be making a newer version of the Apple Pencil 1 that just has a USB-C port on the end instead of lightning. That sounds really dumb and also pretty unlikely. So I'm just gonna say that's not what they're doing. I predict
predict that the iPad 10, if it does switch to USB-C, it's because it will now support the Apple Pencil 2, which is a more expensive stylus, so Apple will probably enjoy that feature. But it's also much better, and it magnetically attaches to the side, which may also mean if you're using Apple Pencil 2, you also have to update the chassis. You can't really keep using that rounded design they've used for years, so I bet I know what a lot of you are thinking already. Well, Drew, you're talking about an A14 chip with USB-C and Apple Pencil 2 support. Aren't you just basically describing the iPad Air 4? That's essentially what it is. And I hear you. I understand that viewpoint, which is where I'm gonna have to speculate and kind of build upon this rumor a little bit because 9to5Mac only told us so much. For one, they said it would also have a 5G option because, you know, Apple loves 5G and basically that's the only iPad in the lineup that doesn't have that as an optional add-on. So it makes sense to add it this year, but how would this budget iPad not cannibalize the sales of the iPad Air? Well, thanks to the baloney the iPad OS team is pushing, there's a good chance that now they feel more comfortable with an iPad being more affordable, but very close to that of the iPad Air because since it has the A14 chip, it doesn't get virtual memory swap and it doesn't get stage manager and it doesn't get the same external monitor support that now the iPad Air 5 and the iPad Pros are rocking. So maybe this time around, they're actually comfortable with updating the hardware. But for the same reason we saw price hikes with the iPhone SE 3 this year and the fact that we're in a very inflationary environment, I would absolutely expect there to be a price hike with the iPad 10. So probably gonna start around $400, maybe even a little bit more. Apple seems really comfortable with these weird $30 increments. So maybe they'll make it like $429. But the other part of the rumor is that it will increase the size of the display from 10.2 inches to now 10 and a half inches. Ross Young, a very reliable supply chain analyst, also backed up this claim, saying that they want the screen size to increase with the iPad 10 a little bit as well. But even 10 and a half inches is not the same size as the iPad Air, which is currently rocking 10.9. So close, you know, pretty neck and neck, but this is where my speculation comes in, okay? This is not part of the source. This is not part of the leak. I think they're redesigning the budget iPad to be more modern and support newer accessories like the Magic Keyboard case, which some of you may have forgotten, yeah. If you want the trackpad and the keyboard and everything from Apple, that only works with the iPad Air and Pro. You can't get the Magic Keyboard case with the budget iPad. So I think maybe they're trying to update it so it can support the Magic Keyboard case, but that will mean an even thicker overall bezel around the border than even the iPad Air 5. So they might not even give it a laminated display just because that seems to simplify manufacturing a lot when they don't laminate it and that definitely makes it look a bit cheaper and not as cool or liquid retina as the iPad Air is. So I have a feeling that this will be kind of a fairly ugly iPad, but at least a different kind of ugly than the dated iPad 9th gen, which still has the home button and that home button is still physical and it still has the big forehead and the big chin. I have a hard time believing that they're gonna update all of their accessories to support this new 10 and a half inch form factor. Like you're gonna have to have another Magic Keyboard case or another Smart Folio case. So that's why I predict similar to the iPad Air 4, reusing the Magic Keyboard case from the 11 inch iPad Pro, you'll still be able to use that keyboard case with this new budget iPad now. The smart connector will be moved to the back, but the display will have even fatter bezels than the iPad Air and it will not be laminated. But you'll still get USB-C, which is pretty awesome. Maybe you won't get the same stereo speaker setup of the iPad Air because again, even if they raise the price to 429 bucks, there's still a $170 price gap between the iPad Air 5 and the iPad 10. And there's really no sign of the iPad Air 5 getting updated in the next year. And these two iPads sound fairly similar to each other now that you can get Type-C on both, now that you'll have Apple Pencil 2 connectivity on both. So I think they have to be careful with how good of a deal they make this budget iPad. And I think making it just a little bit more than an iPad mini, but letting it be compatible with more of the higher end iPad accessories. Apple may be comfortable with it because the profit margins on that budget iPad may not be very good, but I think their plan from the beginning has always been, okay, basically sell the budget iPad at either a loss or break even, and then profit off of all of the accessories you upsell people on. And this budget iPad 10 would be compatible with the $300 Magic Keyboard case, which I'm sure is super profitable, and the Apple Pencil 2, which is $130. So that's where their profit margins are going. And a lot of people will probably be upset by the price hike and the lack of laminated display and the fact that it's kind of ugly, but that price point 
will be why it sells so well in my opinion and i really hope nine to five max source is correct on this their source ended up being spot on with all of the ipad air 5 leaks but those were fairly easy to predict you know that it would get center stage in 5g kind of the rest of the ipad lineup already had it so it was only a matter of time before the air 5 got it now this source is getting a bit more daring saying that they're gonna you know update the whole design language of the budget ipad but i do think that it would bring a lot of consistency to the ipad lineup finally no headphone jack on any ipad and they would all ship with usb-c they would all have the same connector and the same fast chargers ship with them and now the only difference is like hey if you're willing to opt for an ipad air or an ipad pro you get the external monitor stuff you get the thinner bezels you get stage manager and all that crap but for the everyday people that are just looking for an ipad for good note taking and basic media consumption i think this budget ipad would be a really solid option and yeah of course touch id would be in the power button now but there's a lot of speculation and a lot of wishful thinking on my part on this one so definitely let me know if you think i'm wrong or what you guys think apple's gonna do with the ipad 10 and also what you wish apple would be doing with this budget ipad which kind of sticks out in the whole lineup because it doesn't really blend in at all so all that good stuff let me know what you're thinking down below this is your apple sheep here i'll see you all in the next one